In this tutorial in programming, we're going to add images to our project. So instead of drawing things using different uh, geometric primitives, which is a great way to go and it's really low weight, what we're going to do is work with images. So with that, I've grabbed some images off of Pexels, which is a great resource to find images as well as some artwork that I've created. So this piece of artwork is 100 by 100 pixels in size. And if we remember that our unicorn we're working with is height and width of 100. Uh, we will be switching over to a rec base collision in the near future. But right now, uh, first we're just going to work on adding in images to our project while still dealing with circle based collision detection. We will move into rectangle when we have rectangle intersecting with rectangle. But right now, the center circle should be enough to work with on our image. So this image, if I look at it, I will see that it is 100 by 100 pixels in size, resolution 72. And the checkerboard pattern indicates it will have a transparent background. Now the quick way to save it is just to do a quick export as PNG. And then I just need to choose my folder and where I'm going to save it. Now this particular project when we put our, pro our files into it, what we want to do is we want to be a little bit organized. I have my current project folder where I have my state file or my main file, I have my unicorn class, and I'm going to make a new folder here, and I will call it data. And this is where we're going to store our images. So I will put my unicorn inside that data folder. Now when I go into my other images, I'm just going to apply a little image treatment to these just for a little bit of fun so they are customized a little bit more for me on a tan. I'm just going to use the color halftone to go with the little ret retro look that I have going on. Uh, I'm curious if I bump that up a lot. How does it? Yeah, it's probably a little too much. Um, so I don't want to go quite that far. Maybe I will leave it at the 8 and let's see. Like that. Now this image is not the size of my project. So remembering that our project, if we look, is 800 by 600. One of the things we want to do is to avoid loading images that are larger than what we need. We don't want to load extraneous or extra pixels because that's just extra download that we don't want in our project. So if I go into the crop tool, the crop tool allows me to enter in, I can say 800 and then PX for pixels. And then I can go into the next field and this will be 600 PX for pixels. And when we do that, we can then say 72 pixels per inch. Now we can see that this allows me to crop my image however I see fit. So I can choose whatever part of this I want. I can decide I want to just you know scale it down like that. So I, I have options when I'm cropping that I can work with in terms of deciding how or what portion I want for this. So we have a couple of different images we're working with here. And if I look at my other images, so I here I have this. I think I'll use that for my start screen. That's my loose screen. This is going to be my win screen. So this will be my game screen. So knowing that, I'm going to crop it down to the size with it. So now with the crop tool, I can just click the check mark and now it's been cropped. And I want to color this a little bit differently. And there's different ways that we can go about doing it. Adjustment layers are a fast and easy way to do it. So I could do a hue saturation and colorize it and choose it if I wanted to go monochromatic. That's one way. Another fun way is to use gradient map and then we can go and choose a different option. Well, let's see if our thing involves a unicorn. Let's go and grab. Okay, that's probably not going to be quite what I want with the gradient map there, but if we flip-flop that, and let's see, okay, that might be better. Let's go and choose this color. Actually, 
So if this is my dark, oh, this this is my light color. So I want my light color. We'll choose this into cyan there. And now for my dark color, let's darken that up a little bit. A little contrast with the unicorn. It's going to go really dark here. And add in another color in the middle, and this time, so we're doing kind of a tritone gradient map on it. Now, if we compare this to before, we can see that we are starting. Well, we're not using hue set, but I am starting to own the color relationships that I have here, and we'll work with that. So this is going to be my game screen again. Now, quick export PNG, and now I will just call this game. Um, background. So that's been saved, and we can even apply these, you know, similar effects on here. So we can see the crop is set up with the crop tool. So we can decide. Whoa! I don't want to do that. Whoa! Okay. Whoops. Getting out of hand there. Um. Probably don't want to put the little kind of sunburst in the middle of the screen because that's where the button is, or we could draw the button on top of it, that's fine too. And remember, we can go and create a graphic for the button if we want. We can zoom in a little bit so we can see how it's going to look when we're inside of our program. Color halftone, apply the same. In fact, maybe we don't want quite that big. Let's try a different option here. There's just less image data, so we have to be a little more a little bit more careful with it as we go. And This I could certainly choose a whole different color palette, so you don't have to maintain the same look and feel. We have all kinds of. Yeah, it's just kind of fun, so I'm going to go with it. And I'll say OK. So this is going to be my title screen. So this will be title background. And it will be important that we make sure we watch how we're naming things because we will need to reference that once again inside of processing. All right, so I think. I kind of like this image for my Lewis screen. I'm going to have to uh, definitely darken it a little bit. Let's see. Okay, that works. Definitely needs a different color. I don't think pink is appropriate for this. So we'll try and find yeah, I think I might go with that, but I'm going to flip flop those two colors. All right, I like that. It's uh, and gruesome and this is going to be our loose screen
And finally, one more graphic. This is going to be my win. Just cropping it down to size. And now that we have the size on it, oh, before I don't even really need to do a gradient map, I just will do my half tone. All right, so four is the least amount, but I, I like the colors, those are happy colors, so we'll just go with that. And the real focus on this particular activity is not so much about the Photoshop part, but instead is going to be about what we do inside of processing. So when we're working with images inside of processing, one of the things that we need to do is we need to load the image. And then once we load it, we can display the image. So an important part on this is we load images once and only once, and then we just use the image command to display them whenever we want to display them. So we create a variable of the p image type and I'll just this will be uni and then and then we will have our um, net start title background and this will be the game background And our wind background, no, wind. And finally our lose background. So if we, for every image we use, we have to create a variable to store that information. Then we need to populate those. Let's make a variable referencing what's going on. So what I can say is uni is equal to and now we use a load image command and now we have to specify inside quotes where we're going to load it from and I will say in my data folder so we're referencing the folder where the program is then with inside that we have our data folder and then I it's uni.png was the file name so we're just going to do one now just to prove it works once we prove it works at that point we can then load the rest of them. So we load it. Then finally, and images draw from their top left corner, not from their middle. So I have all this image information here. We'll just comment that out. We don't need to see that anymore. But what we do say is we say, not load, we just say image. And then the image that we're trying to display and where we want to display it. Well, first I'll just do X and Y. Now when we do this, if we run our program and hit play, we'll see that it now displays there. Now let's look at where is that in comparison to our image area. And currently I'm going to set my uh, speed equal to zero and I will just put this 200 pixels on screen to start just so we can see it. So we can see that the top left corner of a box that would encompass a rectangle is right here. So when we draw an image and we're using circle based detection we need to offset it by half of the width, which this is kind of like our kind of our um, our boundary checking, where when we get to the end, we're doing things with it, and then we also need to offset by half of the height. And when we do that, we can see that that is the area that I can click on to win. And there it is, and boom. So that is indeed working. 
So we're able to see that image. Once again, to show you, you can see it's drawing that image. Now we want to draw the backgrounds. So to draw the backgrounds, first we have to populate those variables. So, wow, I'm really struggling on the typing here. So my title background is going to be equal to, and we just say load image, and inside of quotes. So what I'm going to do is, in the interest of making this easy, copy, paste, two, four. So we have our title background, game background, Okay. And then our win background. And finally, my lose background. Now, each of these will be in the data folder. And with that, it will be game or title background.png data slash game background. Dot png. So we have to specify the entire path to find it. If we have multiple subfolders inside our data, then we would have to list those as well. So it's all about the path. And then we need that file type extension. Now it, it's important, like in Photoshop, we took the time to Make sure the images were correctly sized, so we're not loading extra pixels. Um, and in the copy pasting is bad if you can't actually get things correct where I didn't capitalize my B's, they were all not underlined. Okay, so the images are here. We're loading the images, they're in memory. So now, just like the unicorn, when we need to use them, that's when we can do it. So instead of calling the background command, now all we have to do is say image, and now which image is this? This is my title background, and we're going to draw it at zero comma zero in the top corner. So now if I run my program, we will see that the title background loads there. So if your images are extra big, it takes longer, you'll see lag in your program. And if you try and reload images outside of setup, you're eventually gonna run out of memory because you'll be loading and loading and loading images all the time. So the next thing we can do is our game background, oh, sorry, image, game background, at zero comma zero. And let's go win background. Oh, I'm so excited about this that I forget to use my image command. Win background, zero comma zero. And finally, we go and put in our image, lose background. And zero comma zero. Now let's run this and see how it works. Get it and click, hey, we win, congrats. And now let's let it lose now that it's capable of losing. And then we'll go back and adjust the starting game. We'll turn off that circle and we will be up and running with this. The only thing you might want to do is to think about images for, let's see, oh, look at that, we lost. So you might want to think about an image for the button. So that would be a challenge that I'd put out to you is how could you create an image for your button and load that instead of using this kind of boring circle. Oh, I forgot to turn the circle off on it. Let's go into the unicorn there and we don't need to see the active area. Let's run it one more final time and click win, click win, and now it should go extra fast. We'll let it go to lose, I lost. So perfect. 
So as you can see, if we load the image files into a p image variable object, using our load image command, making sure our path is correct. The number one error that people run into why their images don't load is their path is incorrect. They don't have the correct file name or extension on it. And then it doesn't work. And remember, only use load image commands inside your setup. You only want to load images once, and you should do it at the beginning. You should do it multiple times in all different places in your program unless you have a really compelling reason why and you've worked that out. All right. Good luck and have fun.